while since we last came here and visited you. I've learned so much since then. Thousands of people all over the world were really amazed at what you were capable of. Holy... Here you go. I just got really lightheaded. That just sounds like something got burned. What the f*** was that? In the late winter of 2022, we were invited out to investigate an isolated farmhouse nestled along the eastern shores of Maryland. Information concerning this location at the time was scarce, offering us only a handful of names, dates, and personal accounts from the property owner. As we began to dig through the evidence presented in the first investigation, we found ourselves largely unaware and unprepared for the things we would begin to uncover. Over the span of a year, our endeavors at this location have unfolded into one of our most captivating investigations to date. With each visit, we discover fresh insights into the entities that still roam the property and the narratives that guided their lives. Among these spirits are several whose presence is palpable, eagerly seeking to engage with us and share their stories through device interactions, spirit box responses, and EVPs that serve as puzzle pieces to clues that we have been searching for from the very beginning. With a history reaching back as far as 1717, it's inevitable that we would discover old energy still lingering here, over three centuries later. Whether they be relatives of the current owners, descendants of the Dawson family who held sway over this property for two centuries before relinquishing ownership to the James family briefly before it eventually passed into the hands of the Jones family in 1953, or something else entirely that we have yet to fully comprehend, this place consistently yields articulate responses during our visits, gradually weaving together a fascinating story full of mystery and strange events. Our journey began with Chapter 1 introducing us to a spirit known as Morris, a young British soldier dispatched overseas with the Royal Navy around the time of the War of 1812, tasked with assaulting the small town of St. Michael's. Morris's tale became a focal point for us when we discovered his presence communicating with us in St. Michael's itself, the very town he may have been assigned to raise to the ground over two centuries ago. You're as real as it gets, trust me. How else would we be having this conversation right now? Trust. Did Morris. You do, did you do that? Did you set He's this? He's a new guy. Did you set this receipt printer off just now? He's got a long story. I want to get to Attached that. Attached to you? I want to get to that, but did you do that just now? He's powerful. Are you talking? Whoa. But don't worry about it. At the time, Morris's intentions remained ambiguous. Whether he sought help or simply wished to be acknowledged, his manifestation in Chapter 2 at the Galley, a location in a town integral to his past exploits, underscored the notion that we may have missed some details in our previous visit at the farmhouse. Among those eager to communicate was Harry, the spirit of a child who met a tragic end after falling from a second-story window of the farmhouse. Harry's willingness to engage with us manifested through consistent responses to the questions we asked using multiple devices at once, which isn't something we see very often. Who was playing with those cat toys? Was that Harry? Can you make him light up again if that was you? Please. Wow. wow. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks, you, Harry. However, our interactions took a darker turn during a dual Estes method session upstairs, where a discussion of murder, betrayal, and deceit briefly came through our responses, creating such a charge in the atmosphere that we experienced poltergeist activity, and we were able to capture the event on camera. We could touch one of the guys. Spirit of a man. Exchange. Who's the man? Which spirit? Mom. 
was disruptive. This family. The mom was disruptive of this family. Was Mary disruptive? You were right. Really? It's sensitive. Is it a sensitive subject to the family? What it's did about she do? the murder? She keeps saying something about the 21st or 21. Are you in the red room? If so, can you make the... Nathan. That door. That door just opened up. Subsequent visits have become vastly different compared to our initial investigation. While spirits like Harry, Morris, Captain Leonard, and Don continued to engage with us, more unknown spirits and energies began to emerge that would quickly set the tone for a more repressed and inactive investigation. It became apparent that our meddling had unearthed something best left undisturbed, provoking frustration and animosity from the opposing energies that worked diligently to silence or persuade the few willing to talk to us from sharing any more than they already have. Recent investigations over the last six months have unveiled a stark transformation in the atmosphere. What once felt welcoming now evokes a persistent sense of unease. While some spirits maintain their neutral or friendly disposition, the repercussions of our earlier investigations have altered the dynamics of our interactions with everything that currently exists there. Our initial visits to this place gave us an abundance of information to examine, despite having hardly any to work with on hand at the time. With the land itself rooted in centuries of history dating back to the 1630s, this location is teeming with narratives stretching across generations, waiting to be discovered. With each successful investigation, this site has become one of our favorite haunts, giving us new evidence and details missed on previous visits that have prompted us to continue exploring it, hoping to uncover more. With new information gathered over the months since our last investigation here, we return to delve deeper into the events that transpired roughly a year prior to seek much-needed answers. Despite our absence, it's as if time has frozen still in this place, leaving us to pick up almost exactly where we left off with Morris, Harry, and the others. It's been a while since we last came here and visited you. We've learned so much since then. We're really excited to talk to you tonight. Are you excited to talk to us? Maybe. Maybe. Who's in here with us right now? We've uh, spoke with a lot of people since we've been here. We've had Morris, we've had Harry, we've had Captain Leonard. Can you come across one of these devices and tell us uh, who's here with us right now? Or maybe go close to one of the mics and one of the cameras? Harry, I know it's you that's playing with those cat toys. Where'd you go? Now that we turned everything on and we're ready to talk, it's like you left. You don't have to be camera shy. We showed a lot of people what you did here. We showed them the interactions that you gave us and thousands of people all over the world were really amazed at what you were capable of, just like that. Thank you, if that was you. And those same people are very excited to hear more from you and hear your stories and hear what you have to tell us. Yes. I hope that you'll come out tonight and tell us more. Morris, if you're here, if you can hear me right now. She's in I'd like to speak with you just you at some point tonight, if that's okay. Knock back there. Is that like towards the beginning? Yeah, and the pressure's going off on the EDI. Are we speaking with Morris? <laughs> Said probably. <laughs> right when that was 
went off. I heard something back in the kitchen again. Yeah, I think the pressure just went off. I think I keep seeing it out of the corner of my eye. Well, Morris, if that's you, it's good to... Oh, Ooh, this just... Yeah, it instantly like went. That instantly said yeah. yes. Huh. It's nice to talk to you again, Morris. Yeah, it's good to be back. We... Well, again. I know. <laughs> we appreciate you having us back. I know it's been a little while. Like Mike said, uh, a lot of people got to see how amazing you are. You know, it's pretty incredible the amount of activity that you've given us every time we've came. But I'm sure that there's still a lot that we can learn from you and you can learn from us. I hope that's okay. Could be. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> so Morris, I've been doing some thinking about what you've shared with us and what you've shared with me personally since we've visited here. And I think I may be on to something. I don't know. Maybe you could help me out, help me figure out what happened to you. Yes. And a pressure change. It seems like every time there's a pressure change, this goes off too. That said yes, pressure change in the cat ball is still going off yeah. next to you. It's definitely yeah. Morris. Morris did this okay. the last time that we were here. Yeah. Here. Here. Holy. Hear you. Hear you. That's wow. Crazy. That's so cool. We're glad that you can hear us. Morris, you, you said you were a soldier in the British Navy or the British Army. You came over here when you were 16 or 17 years old. You... Landed here, I'm assuming, to take over St. Michael's or to burn St. Michael's to the ground because they were responsible for building the Baltimore Clippers. They were the fastest American ship that could outmaneuver any British ship in the water. And I'm sure your orders were to come here and to burn that place to the ground, right? Is that what happened? You can touch any one of these toys as a way to say yes to us. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. Thank you. When you came here... Oh, no way. No way. So when you came here, I take it you probably got cold feet. You probably thought to yourself, this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And you tried to get away. Was this where your ship landed? Were you meant to travel on foot? Yes. To St. Michael's? <clears throat> what happened to you after that? Cat ball's going off. Morris, were you tried for mutiny? I just heard something clear the throat back there. Never. He wasn't tried for mutiny. Okay. Did you... Were you left here? So you were left here. Did you did you choose to stay behind, or were you actually left here? Did they just leave? Were you too scared to go back because you were afraid of the consequences that were going to happen if they found out that you abandoned your post and fled during a battle? Maybe as well. Do you stay here? Because you feel guilty? Do you feel some kind of burden for leaving? For not upholding your sworn duty? Could be. Hmm. 
Are there some other soldiers here with you? That possibly fought with you? Or maybe you tried leaving with and you all got stranded here together? I think the pressure just went off. I don't know. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Said probably again. There's got to be a reason why you still stay here. I mean, you wouldn't just stay here, would you? I understand this is a beautiful place, but given the... Doubtful. Doubtful. Yeah, I mean, given the circumstances of what happened towards the end of all of this, I would imagine you're looking for some kind of peace, aren't you? You do want to get out of here, right? Can you tell us what regiment you were in? I might be going out on a limb here by asking this. I don't even know if this is true or not, but Morris, is your first name Daniel? No way. No way. Daniel, do you feel guilty for what you did? You can be honest. I promise we're not here to judge you. You're not going to get in trouble or anything like that. It's been a very long time since that happened. I don't know if you realize this, but a very long time has passed. I know you may feel some kind of guilt and maybe some shame for abandoning your battalion and walking away from the duty that you swore into, but you were very young. You were still developing and becoming a man. You didn't know better. And no young man at your age should be fighting wars. Certainly. So it's completely understandable why you did what you did. We don't judge you for it. I promise. We just want you to find peace and move on. You don't have to stay here. You're not bound to this place and you're not bound to whatever oath you swore when you were alive. It's just spite. You're, you're free to do whatever you want now. And I'm really hoping that after tonight, you make your own decision and you go into the light or you at least move on into a, a place where you're just happier and you're at peace. Not sitting around waiting on us to come visit you and talk to you or not lingering around my house like I know you have been. As much as I enjoy your company, I'm sure you have family and friends that have been waiting for you for a very long time. And by you staying here, you are denying them that gift of being able to reconnect and reunite with you again. They love you. And they miss you very much. You can take all the time that you need. There's no rush. Yeah, we enjoy your company. But I'm sure they would as well. Pressure went off. This is false. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And even if you think that they don't, maybe they don't. You still have people over there waiting to reconnect with you. Maybe they're people you've never met, but you'll recognize them the moment that you get there. 
You just have to trust what I'm saying, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mind you, the house has been dead silent up until we started investigating. Yeah. There hasn't, like, been noises of the house settling or critters or anything like that. It's been... It's not windy out. There's no wind. Yeah. There's no bugs. It's not raining. It's it's dead quiet. Yeah. I know this is a beautiful place. And maybe you've come to love it here. I'm sure everybody that comes here falls in love with it. It's It's a beautiful place. But the circumstances of your life and the way that it ended here isn't ideal for anyone. And you shouldn't cling on to that. You shouldn't cling on to the memory of that moment. You're free to come visit us whenever you want. You might not be able to play with all of these fun lights and talk to us the way that you currently do, but you have other ways of leaving us messages and letting us know that you made it safe and that you're okay. And we'll get them and we'll know it's you. Absolutely. But just please trust me move on from this place do you want to set up for an estus sure do an estus method in here sure. so when we initially met morris we never actually got a first name from him anytime morris was mentioned it seemed like murphy would get brought up as well we thought maybe his first name could have been murphy murphy morris morris murphy however you want to put that but we were never able to actually confirm this while we were there after i learned that morris had been hanging around me at the galley i decided to sit with him for a little while at my house and just talk with him try to figure out where he came from why he's here and just see if there was something that i could do to possibly help him in the way that we were trying to figure out his name through going through the alphabet, I did the same thing at home. We were eventually able to come up with the name Daniel. I didn't get a chance to verify this in real time while we were doing this because once the name actually came through, responses completely stopped. A couple of months later, we filmed this investigation and I remembered that conversation. So I figured, why not? We're here, we might as well talk about it. So I asked about it and that was the first time that I can recall actually getting evidence on camera for questions that I had asked months prior, off camera, totally unrelated to the investigation. The events that have occurred at Forest Haven have changed how I decided to approach these investigations. One of our goals doing this is to try and help people if we can, whether that be giving the living answers to questions they may have or helping the deceased move on. I have no desire to constantly document this stuff, especially the more personal aspects of it of trying to reach out and help them. I don't go back to locations to follow up and verify evidence or information that we gather on camera, mainly because we don't have the opportunity to. But this is one of those special locations where I can go back again and again and again and ask questions to follow up answers that we got in previous investigations. We've had several instances where we've captured evidence on camera that is presented through information that we may be picking up in the area, whether that be seeing things out of the corners of our eyes or hearing voices. The ability to do that stuff will naturally progress the more that you seek it out and the more you involve yourself with it. And because I'm involved in this on a day-to-day -day basis, it makes sense that I'm able to start picking up on and hearing and seeing and feeling a lot more than when I first started. I was completely shocked to see that cat ball go off because I was verifying things that I was picking up in my own home. Sure, there could be some deceptive spirit here lying to me, just telling me what I want to hear to gain my trust. That's totally a possibility here too, but it didn't feel deceptive. It didn't feel like whoever was there was lying to me. I really do fully believe that this was Morris talking to us. Now that we had actually figured out his first and his last name, we wanted to try and communicate with him through an Estes session to get more details on the events in his life and what led up to the moment of him landing here and why he's still here. <laughs> And the cap all going okay, off. Yeah. 
Okay, but you saw that I reset it and it yep. didn't do it for like and a good two minutes and now it's just, the cap ball going off. It's yeah. just doing it right. randomly again. Now I know this very well could be something else. I'm not saying that this is a definitive response to what I think it may be, but during review I heard what sounded like to me two very clear responses of the name Morris, even on a static station. Normally you pick up responses through the sweeps itself, but to hear David click on the spirit box and almost immediately follow up with was really interesting. And it wouldn't surprise me if it was Morris that actually did that. We've seen in the two previous investigations just how powerful his energy is. He has no problems making himself known to us. Morris, can you hear me? Can you please speak through David clearly so I can hear you? Maybe. Well, that's a start. I hope that you take into consideration what I told you. I mean every bit of it. I just want you to be happy. Be at peace with yourself. They made us. Who? Who made you? What are you referring to? Two of them. Are you talking about us? No. Are you talking about the two elementals that you had referred to the last time that we were here? Sound like uh, someone making the sound like when they get hit in the stomach, like the ugh kind of thing. Morris. Hey, Morris. Did you say starve on this device over here earlier? Is that what happened to you? Yeah. I'm so sorry. That was me. Oh. Felt like something just touched the inside of my leg. Got you. <laughs> there was a, a, a real a different voice than what I've been hearing just came through and said, Hey. It was really weird sounding. Could you come forward and tell David something? Your name? I feel like just, I feel like just keep some keeps like touching the inside of my leg like that. Like like that. Mm. Oh. We're sorry. <laughs> Keep touching him. The K2 just spiked in front of me on the coffee table, so did the pressure on the EDI. We're going to give him up. Behind you. Behind who? Me or Dave? I brought someone with me. Who'd you bring? Behind the table. Okay. Who'd you bring? What's their name? Are they one of the soldiers that you were here with? Good job, Mike. Keep talking. To us. I will. I appreciate and enjoy talking to you. We do too. Appreciate it. Too. You're really good. You sound like a here. scream. You always give us interaction. You're always willing and able to come out and talk whenever you like. As soon as we show up, you always make yourself known. And say la vie. <laughs> I uh, I hope you know that we don't take it for granted, David. Old mill. What about the old mill? Old mill again. Is that where you want us to go? I need help. Tell me where you are. I'd love to help you. Are you over by the old mill? Sure. Is that mill still standing or has it been replaced by oh, man. something else? Maybe a barn? Maybe it's empty land now? He'll die. 
Or is the old MILF still there? After something. I swear to me it sounded like the spirit box said still there. So we're definitely going to have to ask uh, Lisa about an old mill. Or maybe David knows. Behind you. Is the old For mill sure. behind me? It's back this way, back from where we drive in. David. Oh, something just... Help. Mike. Me. How How can I help you? Are you stuck here? Someone help him. Are these soldiers that stayed behind or got left behind after the... Don. Invasion. Hi, Don. What's up? Hello, Michael. Not much. How are you? Amazing. That's good. Hope you're all right. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm doing okay. I'm better now that you're here. Better now that I can Me talk too, to maybe. you. Me too, maybe. That's good. Don, are you a friend of Morris? Yep. Did you come here with Morris? Don't know him. You don't know him? Okay. He's... I don't know. In here? Don, where did you come from? Did you live here at one point? Were you... Maybe a homeowner? When you, are you part of the family? Oof, I just got really light-headed. Try to take it easy on David, please. I need him in tip-top shape so he can continue to communicate. He's your voice right now. If you wear him out, he's not. you're not going to be able to talk. So take it easy on him, please. Don, what are you trying to say that you're... you're he within... can take it. He can, but he's also got stuff to do tomorrow. But I'll try. Thank you. To tear something. Don't tear anything. Up. These voices that are coming through are really weird. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know what that was. Can you let me know where you came from, Don? You can describe it. You can describe it with one word. Just anything to help us understand who you are and where you're from. He's heavy? Are you saying that Don has heavy energy? The heaviest? Whoa, that was really loud. Around. So Don has sort He'll of He'll upset you. Heavier presence. Make you... Huh? Worried? No, that's okay. Heavy? I'll, I'll be all right. Feeling? What brought you here, Don? Tra entrapment? Are you stuck here? K2 on the coffee table just spiked. Element? Oh. I kind of figured that was going to be... Outside. Rose? A road? So Don, Warning? Don, is that the name that you gave him? Is that the name that this elemental has assumed? Slamming? Are we safe to go outside and communicate with who's out there? Or should we stay in the house? Uh-huh. <laughs> Which one? There was something that was a really deep voice back... Huh. By the water or something. Outside. Yeah, we know. There's a lot of stuff outside. We're hoping to talk to them. Sobbing? Sobbing? Is it a person? Someone out there looking for help? You got it. Well, we're going to try and help them, okay? If you could please go let them know. Horrible? 
This is John, maybe? Nope. It said nope. Don. Don. Hi, Don. Still trying to figure out who you are and where you came hey. from. Hey. Is Captain Leonard here? Morris. Hi, Morris. I'm back. Where did you go? Were you jealous? <laughs> oh, when I was gone? No. I'm back. I'm glad you're back. To you. I'll sing outside. Do you want us to go outside? Are you ready for us to come out and talk to you out there? You'll be scared. Nah, I doubt it. There's 12 of us. There's 12 of you, huh? Plus nine. Plus nine. Last time? So there's 21 total. 21. Wow. Exactly 21. Wow. And the K2 spiked. Holy. Start tick. Start counting. Okay. There's 21 of you. I hope to see 21. Or the names. 21 of you. What we were able to gather from this Estes method was that Morris was left behind after the British Navy fled an unsuccessful battle. That he chose to abandon his post and seek refuge somewhere or fled to the woods. We know that he didn't go home once the Navy left. It was truly gut-wrenching to hear that he starved to death. It's not something that I was expecting to pick up while we were here. Back in the 1800s, Boys became men as early as 14 years old. A lot of these young soldiers that were fighting in this War of 1812 were orphans or they were coaxed into it by recruiters or their fathers. I don't know what Morris's life was like prior to this, but I'm assuming that when he got here, he realized either he wasn't cut out for this or this wasn't what he thought it was gonna be. And he left, he ran, along with a few other soldiers from what we're gathering here. And it's just, it's so sad to think that this young man was doing what he was told. Whatever the motives were behind it, he followed through. And unfortunately, it cost him his life. Once we concluded that conversation with Morris, we decided to head outside because we were told that there's somebody out in the road weeping. They want to speak with us. It was great timing too, because I had just talked to David on the phone about how good the weather was going to be that night. So we could go outside. We were looking forward to covering more ground tonight. With that being said, this is probably one of the strangest sequences that I have ever filmed while doing this. I know you had mentioned earlier out on the road or something about the road. And I'm assuming that it ties in to here. I don't know where specifically, but this area always gave me the creepiest feeling when I would drive through here. Yeah, it's almost like the, the unknown of this spot. Yeah. Because you don't really spend a lot of time over here other than to just drive through it to get to the farmhouse. Right. But even now, like, I can definitely feel stuff out here. Just don't know what. I bet there's all kinds of different stuff on here. Oh, absolutely, dude. I mean, all absolutely. kinds of different energies. And like I said, we've had elemental issues here, Native American things. So there's at least two here plus 21. You said 12 plus 9. And I was like, ah, so there's 21 here, and you went 21. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go that way. This one? Yeah. That's good. If there's anybody out here with us tonight, we invite you out to come speak with us. We were just back at the farmhouse talking with Morris and Tommy and Don. And they all said that you guys were out here, whoever you are. My name is Mike. This is David. Hey, guys. I'm not sure if you've been acquainted with us yet or... Maybe you've been peeking through the windows, watching our conversations, but I just want to let you know that we come here in peace. We're only here to talk to you, try to learn about you and learn about this land. We know that there's an awful lot of history here. 
Maybe you could share some of that with us. If there is anyone out here, could you please come over and touch this red light in my hand? You'll make it buzz and light up. I promise it won't hurt you. It's just a way for us to know that you're here. There's also a red light over there on that tub and two balls on the ground. If you go close to those, they'll light up different colors. Got a little something. Can you come a little bit closer? Touch it for a little bit longer? You're doing good. You're making it light up. You just have to put a little more energy into it and you'll make it buzz. Can you do that for me? There you go. Yeah. It's really good. Thank you. A little bit more. You can do it. What the f was that? I couldn't even tell which direction that came from. It was straight ahead. You heard it too, right? It yeah, almost absolutely. sounded like talking. Yeah, yeah. Are you out there talking? Can you come over here and come talk to us? And yeah, obviously nothing would be coming from that way. No. The end of the property and that's where we just came from. Yeah, if anybody were to come onto the property, they would have to come from well, yeah, that way. Have to come from that way. Let's heard it again. Maybe they're down there. Do you want us to walk back that way some more? Could you make this buzz or light up if you want us to go that way? It's lighting up. It's very faint, but... Oh, that was a bigger one. One more time, just to confirm. Oh, I buzzed that time. Nice. Okay, we're going to go that way. We're going to come talk to you. I wonder if, I wonder if they're down here where we first started oh. getting those feelings. Right there. Right to your right. Right there. 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 I haven't gotten chills the whole time we've been out here, and my whole body is covered in them right now. All right, let's set up right here. I think I just saw you over there in that pile of logs and fencing. Is that, was that you? Is this a better spot? Is this a better spot? Is this a better spot? Is this where we heard you? Could have swore I just saw you over there. Cat ball. Thank you. Thank you. That was really amazing. Could you do that one more time, please? David didn't get to see it. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really cool. See, I told you it wouldn't hurt you. None of these devices will hurt you, I promise. I hope you don't mind that we came out here to talk to you. You know, like you, we just heard a little bit earlier that we thought, you know, might want us to come down here. Is there anything you want to tell us now that we're out here?
Are you okay with us being out here? Could you touch one of these lights as a way to say yes to us? If you're okay with us being here? Whoa. I'm seeing like big wisps of things and it's not the leaves. Right. We were told that there's elementals out here. And that they didn't want us out here. But there were some other people that did want us out here. So we're trying to speak with them. Whoever you are, whoever you... Whoever those people were that were speaking to us in the house. Could you please come forward and come talk to us? I know that obviously not everything has substantial paranormal significant meaning but i do find it really weird that it's been dead still and then the moment we decide to come out the weather up. starts picking up and the rain starts falling and the wind is blowing again not saying that's paranormal and but there are elementals out here who are in control of the earth's elements and if you look at the weather it's not supposed to rain at all tonight no zero percent chance no it's the rain is gone it's only a foggy yeah still night and when we were back there walking out it's on camera yeah we <laughs> it was dead still yep are they throwing shit that just sounded like something got thrown at us that sounded like something got thrown it was dead still yep it was dead still yep that didn't sound like a branch falling or anything no, like that no that was a thud that was a clear thud and there's no pine trees out here, right? Nope. Okay, so it can't be a pine cone. That would be a big ass pine cone. It's not like a. I mean, pine like cones are fing dense. You'd be surprised, but. It doesn't sound like a coconut. A, the only thing that I could think of would make that sound is a pine cone. Acorn's not gonna do it. Yeah, no way. And yeah, you can, I mean, you can see none of these are pine trees. Nah, these are what? Spruce, there's holly, oak. There's a holly. There's, yeah, there's oak, white oak right there. Are you throwing stuff now? Are you upset with us being out here? I mean, if you don't want us out here, you can touch one of those lights to tell us to leave and we'll leave. We don't come here to disrespect or intrude, I promise. We just came out here to talk. They want us to leave. I just saw some, did you just jump around because you thought you saw something behind you? No, the cat ball just went off. Dang, I didn't see it. Yeah, that's why I was like, they want us to leave. Because oh, the dude, cat I ball just, went off. Dude, right when you said that, I saw someone walk right behind you. So you want us out of here. You don't want us back here, huh? Are we trespassing? Oh. Wow. Well, I'm sorry that you feel as though we're trespassing. I, like I said, we come here with good intention. We come here with the permission of the current owners as well. We're sorry if uh, we're upsetting you in any way. We really don't mean to, just like Mike said. What's upsetting you with us being here? Grandpa just... Oh, my cat ball. Cat ball. Is it something good. that we're doing? Or something that we did, you just don't want us here. You don't like us being here, is that what it is? You don't want anyone here. Because this is your land. It's very quiet back here. No one ever really comes back here, if at all, other than to pass through to get to the farmhouse, so... You're probably not used to this. Ooh, I'm getting crazy chills right now. Well, we're not gonna stay out here very long. You don't want us out here. I'm seeing you every time I turn my head. David's seeing you. You've made it very clear that we're not welcome here, so... We're gonna move on to a different spot. We just, we were told to come out here, out on the road. And that maybe there was somebody out here that wanted to speak with us. This isn't Don, is it? someone walking up on me. I didn't hear anything. I just had the feeling. It is done? Are 
Are you out here messing with us, trying to scare us down? What the fuck? I wonder if it's the the little people that Lisa was talking about. Was he used to live on out here? Yeah, or like... Like had all the village, you know, the village thing? Either the village, or like, I know she had also mentioned something about, like, non-human, like, entities, oh, like, yeah. little people, like, trolls, brownies, yeah. that sort of thing. So this would be a good spot. Yeah. Are there non-human energies out here? Are there beings out here that have lived here for a long time? Please tell me you heard that. So, you, so like the talking over that way? It was like a, it the sounded gun. like a cat. What is going on? I wonder if they'd get in trouble if they told us, the living ones anyways, the, the human souls. It feels very different here. The farmhouse is manageable. This is, yeah, this, this, is, this is a lot. I think they're trying to push us out. I think they're trying to push us out. I think they're trying to push us out. Well, I know you might not like us here, but like Mike said earlier, we're, we're just here to talk and come with the best intention. These devices in our hands are just so that way we can have something to go back and look at and hear what you said. Try to match up any information you give us with history that's been documented. None of this stuff will hurt you, I promise. We're trying to help Lisa figure out the history of this place. And we're very curious about it too, that's why we've been here so many times. We just want you to share that with us. Teach us what happened here, what went on. We know that the British landed here on this peninsula and tried to push in to St. Michael's. Were you here even before that war? Dude, I'm hearing like talking and Yeah, I was hearing something from over this way. That's where I heard it too just now. Dude, something was just like running up on us. Dude, that's I I thought someone was That's every time I feel like I'm hearing something behind me. Yeah. Up on us, behind us. That starts going off like it's coming through us and Yeah. I don't know. I thought I saw a flashlight over here. I thought I saw a flashlight over here. I thought I saw a flashlight over here. What the f was that? That sounded like somebody yelled my name. That's what I was. Did you hear how it sounded? It sounded like a woman yelling, yeah. Mike! Oh, the leaf hit it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait. Yeah, this leaf in it just now. Who is that woman that just yelled? We heard you. Where are you? Could you yell again? Did I just hear it again? As I was talking? I something. It sounded like it was back down that way. Towards the barn. I just heard some footsteps over there.
Is there someone in the barn that we can talk to? We've heard that there's some energies in there that make Lisa a bit uncomfortable. Is it okay for us to go down there? Can you touch one of those lights if it is? People walking behind us. I'm hearing it all over the all over, all over the place. I keep feel like I'm seeing things too. Should we not go into the barn? Should we stay out of it? Can you touch one of those lights if we should? Lisa said that the energies up there at the barn are completely different than the rest of the property. Is that what we're starting to feel here as we're getting closer to the barn? Well, I guess we're going to have to go find out for ourselves since you won't tell us. But thank you nonetheless for coming out and talking to us now. Yeah, thank you. I didn't expect to get anything out here at all, but... There's definitely someone or something out here. There's definitely someone or something out here. There's definitely someone or something out here. Did you hear footsteps? Uh, I, heard I heard two. Well, thank you for your time. We're going to get moving. In the previous investigation here in the kitchen, there's a spirit box response that comes through that mentions there are two water elementals here. You mentioned the elemental earlier. Can you tell us what kind? But we didn't look further into it. It was just more or less a fleeting thought. The term elemental is a blanket term to help describe a large group of entities or various types of entities used in the same breath as demons or angels. I was hoping to connect with whoever was outside, apparently weeping in the road, but it was very clear to me within a matter of minutes we had stepped into a space that we weren't welcome in. I've never seen the weather just change so rapidly in front of me the way that it did that night. I've said it in the investigation, I'll say it again here, I'm not saying that this is substantial or paranormal evidence, it's just something that I wanted to point out because we were so excited to go out and film tonight. We knew that the weather was going to be clear enough and it wouldn't ruin our equipment. And just like that, out of nowhere, everything changes. The wind's blowing sideways. It starts raining. I had just never experienced anything like that. Weather is very unpredictable already as is. The forecast could have been wrong. So there are explanations as to why this could have happened. But at the same time, you can see on camera, as we're walking into the woods, the weather's fairly calm. The wind starts to pick up a little bit, but it's not doing what it was doing 10 minutes in to being out there. So maybe they had something to do with it. I don't know. As far as the noises we were hearing around us, I ended up going back the very next day and I just double checked my surroundings and I looked in that particular patch of woods there are very tall pine trees, and the branches are almost at the very top of them. It's just not something that you notice when you go through there. So with that being said, the only explanation I can come up with outside of animals would have to be a pine cone falling from one of those trees. Pine cone that hasn't bloomed can weigh sometimes over a pound. And if it's falling from 50 plus feet up in the air, when it hits the ground, it's gonna smack pretty hard. It's gonna make some noise. From where we were standing on the road, you can't see them on camera. They're, they're a good 75 to 100 feet back from that shot. So no light, low field of sight. You couldn't see them in the moment. When you're hearing people walking around you that you can't see and these extremely clear voices out in the distance, despite the weather and being on an isolated plot of land, we were on edge. I mean, we didn't know what was going on around us. 
my brain immediately went to animals because that's just the rational thing that most people would think when you're out in the woods on a secluded piece of land. Yeah, there's deers, raccoon, foxes, all that. I still can't explain the footsteps. And I can't explain the voices that we were hearing that we also caught on camera. It was dead still. Yep. Are they throwing shit? That just sounded like something got thrown in us. That sounded like something got thrown. We do our best to try and respect the request of every spirit that we come across, but nobody was giving us answers as far as who was in the barn and if we were allowed to go in there or not. So we took it upon ourselves to go see who was in there. Why is the energy so different in here? Who's in here? Oh, I just got a chill right when you said that. What's your name? You seem to intimidate people when they come in here. I'm just gonna assume that was an animal. I'm trying to think of what animal, but I would assume that was an animal as well. So. You seem very frustrated. What? What's the matter? Are you trying to talk to us through this device here? Are you sending us a Morse code? Lisa told us to come up here because the energy just seems to be completely different, a lot heavier. And a lot of people seem to see the same people upstairs. People have even described their characteristics the same. Is that you that's touching this device now? Are you the person that's upstairs? If so, can you touch it three times? Guess not. Well, since you know how to use this device, you've been setting it off and you figured it out very quickly before we even had a chance to introduce ourselves. Let's make things simple. How about one beep for yes and two beeps for no? If you understand me, can you make it beep one time? Oh, well, there's your three. There's the three. <laughs> I said no. Are you a part of Lisa's family? Is that why you're still here? Yes. Are you a close relative or a distant relative? You're close. More relative. close. Who do you think it is? I'm wondering if it could be someone like her dad up here, just maybe just protecting the whole property. That beeped once. Just to clarify, is this Lisa's dad? Wow. wow. Well, thank you for coming out and talking to us. It really means a lot. You know, we've been here a few times and it's uh, really great. I think we've spoke with you every time. We're grateful to be here. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I know that you may not seem thrilled about this. I even felt like we were sort of intruding when we first walked in. I could tell that you didn't want us in this space.
I understand that. Is it just saying yes over and over? Pretty much. Is Captain Leonard's family still here? What about the carpenter who built the original farmhouse? His name is inscribed on the inside of the wall. It said no. He's not here anymore? No, again. Do you remember us from last time we were here? Well, we're glad. That means we uh, made an impression on you. Do some people think you're a little aggressive just because you're trying to protect the property? To me, it seems like you've sort of taken up the duty of keeping the land safe, or at least as safe as you can. I could see how that could come off as aggressive. Are we welcome to come here? Well, thank you, Don. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. I hope you know that we don't take it for granted. Honestly, you're the first, I think, that I've ever spoke to that has done this. Yeah. As far as answer us with one or two beeps accurately and intelligently the way that you are it's it's incredible this place just never ceases to amaze me said yes <laughs> you agree don are there elementals here you've heard about them You heard the man. Are they friendly? good. I was always under the impression that elementals didn't like people. No. Hmm. Maybe I've just met some grouchy ones. I don't know. It doesn't feel threatening here in any way. Were they the ones messing with the devices over in the woods? Walking around us? Throwing things? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna get out of here. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, you can stay. You can stay. Yeah. Are there little people here? Lisa mentioned something about that, and we're just a little curious about it. Do they stay out in the woods as well? Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. Yeah. This is, this is crazy. As many times as we've been here, it never occurred to me that we could have possibly been speaking with Lisa's father, Donnell Jones. According to Lisa, he didn't go by Don, he went by his full name, Donnell. And there was one instance where somebody he wasn't very acquainted with called him Don and he hated it. So I don't see why he would want to be addressed as Don 
when nobody addressed him that way, and the one time that he was addressed like that, he, he didn't like it. It's something I definitely plan on following up with at some point in future investigations. Regardless of who this Don is, he wasted no time sharing all kinds of information with us regarding this property. It was all very insightful things that we needed to know about so we can go back later and try to interact with those different energies or those different beings that exist there and try to make sense of what's going on around us. Knowing now everything that exists there according to what Don was telling us really puts into perspective the uneasy, unsettled feeling that we've been picking up on lately. It's not everyone. The usual people, Don, Captain Leonard, Harry, Morris, and a couple others, they tend to come through, they, they converse with us, and we get our usual interactions with them. It's hard to explain the feeling without you being there physically. It's like walking in on a heated conversation. It's the best way I can put it. It's that momentary feeling of embarrassment or, oh, I didn't mean to walk in on you, but it stays, and it stays the entire time that you're there. Regardless of who or what is trying to push us out, it's not going to stop us from continuing these investigations. Whether they choose to adapt to our presence being there, or if there's some way that we can find a middle ground to be able to coexist with them in the same space comfortably, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure something out, but we still have a lot of questions that we wanna ask about this place, and a few weird feelings and strange events is not gonna push us out.